Now more than ever, tapping into Asia has become an urgent mission for businesses and professionals by the year 2040. The Asia, as the largest continent, is expected to drive 40% of the world consumption, representing a real shift in the economic epicenter. And as of today, Asia Pacific towers, among others, with 640 million consumers and the rank of eight in the world's economy. And ready here with us is Professor Dr. Abdul Kabo Ibrahim, Organizing Chairman, Africa Expo 2022 AAC. So thank you, Doctor, for being with us tonight. Um, so, Doctor, the Asian is expected to drive the economy by 2040. In the Southeast Asia, uh, in particular, uh, what is Malaysia's, uh, how can Malaysia play a significant role in the future of the economy of the world? Okay, thank you, Janina. Okay, if you look at the current situation, you can definitely see, predict that, or even forecast that Asia is going to lead. If you look at China, India, and uh, Japan, the three leaders at the moment, and also the ASEAN, they are four. So if the, the, current, if the current situation continues, I think by the year 2040, Asia will lead the world economy. And uh, if you are talking about ASEAN, in fact, there has been a forecast that by the year 2050, Asian, ASEAN will be the fourth largest economy in the world. In fact, it will beat Japan and the other countries. You are looking at China, India, US, and ASEAN. So you can see the ASEAN is already in the right direction to be, to be one of the world's largest economy. Coming back to Malaysia, of course, uh, currently you can see with some ups and downs, Malaysia is still a leader in ASEAN. In terms of our economy, the infrastructure, the situation in Malaysia, the sustainability, and, and so on. Malaysia has always been pro-business, pro-trade, and pro-investment. Um, so I don't have any doubt that we will be left behind because there have been some articles saying that we are going to lose out to other ASEAN countries. I don't think so. I think we will definitely be one of the leaders in ASEAN. And also there has been a bank report I just read recently that we might be the 21st biggest economy in the world by the year 2050. Recently, we have seen challenges where export uh, and import are affected due to limited uh, co uh, commodities. So how is Malaysia can address uh, these challenges while maintaining the open trade policy uh, for the benefit of the national economy? I think more or less we are looking at the situation during COVID. I think during COVID, a lot of... Uh, uh, commodities were not available. I think that, that's it because there's no production in terms of plantation, in terms of construction, in terms of uh, manufacturing. That is the reason why you see a lot of uh, cries here and they're saying that we cannot get this product, cannot get this product. But if you look at Malaysia, I think we came out very well. And uh, to my surprise, that we thought that by having this kind of uh, limited commodities, our export will shrink. But in fact, it's the other way around. In fact, in 2022, our export has boomed. So the, the lack of commodity is not really, uh, is not really a big issue. Now. That's what I would say, yes. Uh, in terms of that, can you enlighten us a bit about uh, if it's not a big issue so we can understand better on this? I think during, even during the uh, time of uh, COVID, I don't really see uh, much of an issue saying that we have lack of this, lack of that. Maybe a few, few products, we may have essential products because they were not coming into the country because of COVID. But as we go along, I think the Malaysians were able to cope with that. And uh, then, and, and as time passed, we even became a, a big exporter, and uh, especially on products like uh, uh, healthcare products and uh, commodities. And I know they were talking about 
some uh, limitation on our chicken export, for example. But that is really uh, not a big issue, la, as I as I've said before. Thanks. So in the recovery phase of economy for Malaysia, we have seen many sectors uh, ramp up to strengthen their businesses. In fact, we see a growing appetite, uh, like experiencing uh, new uncharted territories. But in your view, what are the gaps that exist in the business sector in Malaysia and which uh, part uh, that needs improvement so uh, we can uh, maximise the opportunities here? Okay, uh, what happened was uh, now, after COVID, in fact, all industries, of course, some industries has already gone. Uh, they are not there. But all the other industries, it doesn't matter whether it's service or manufacturing or plantation, I think everybody is ramming to restart again or to start continuing what they have been doing before. So in that process, because of what they have gone through during the times of COVID, a lot of uh, changes happen in the way they do business and also the uh, I think you're talking about uh, countries, the focus uh, uh, countries, all this has slowly changed. Now they are, for example, now they are using a lot of digital uh, marketing, they are using e-commerce and so on, even, even education, training, um, export, uh, cross-border e-commerce. I see there is an increase in that. So this is a uh, this is the development we see after the COVID uh, pandemic. I, I think I think uh, if you are talking about issues, I mean uh, gaps. One of the biggest uh, problem faced by Malaysians when they start, re, I mean start activating their businesses was the labor problem. I think uh, uh, this has been a very big issue in Malaysia where we have been facing shortage of labor. The productions are not coming in on time, especially on the plantation, uh, manufacturing sector, and so on. I think the government, the Ministry of Home, uh, Human Resources, they have been doing, including KDN, Kementerian eh? Dalam Negeri, have been doing quite a lot of uh, uh, structuring to ensure that this problem does not take place. And uh, hopefully, that it will be resolved. I think it is still not resolved. There are still a lot of industries uh, facing problems because of this sort of thing. But I hope that in time to come, this will be resolved soon. All right, talking about when it comes to international trade, we often hear grand narratives um, regarding business opportunities from uh, uh, arising from the West. So, but what is the common uh, perception and even feedbacks in Malaysia or when it comes to business from Africa and does it reflect the current reality right now, Doctor? Yeah, okay. Um, I think those days, everybody was looking at Europe. Uh, the West, they were looking at where they were looking at the US for their export. But now they have slowly looked at the opportunities in ASEAN, I don't know, opportunities in ASEAN and, and Asia. As for Africa, it's always they have some kind of a negative perception on Africa. And you don't see Malaysians moving aggressively into Africa. My background is that I have been the Malaysian Trade Commissioner in Belgium for nine years. And from there, I was transferred to South Africa as the first Malaysian Trade Commissioner in South Africa. So when I went there, I see a lot of difference. When I was in Europe, a lot of Malaysians were coming to us and they wanted to export to that part of the world. But when I was in Africa, I have to beg Malaysian companies, you know, please come, please come. No, the main reason is they think that Africa is difficult to deal. Then they think that there's a lot of scam going on. They also think that Africans are poor, no money, mm. and so on. You know, they, they feel, ah, oh. and uh, they, they see political instability. Uh, they, 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 they link Africa to civil war. And some of the media is giving that kind of protection. But to me, I have stayed in Africa for six years, and I can tell you there is a lot of opportunities in Africa that we Malaysians are missing out. But our neighbors, uh, including uh, Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand, they are doing very well. 
in uh, in Africa. And the way they do business is also different. It's not like opening up a letter of credit and then you do business revelation. Always say you want to deal with Africa. Okay, I want a letter of credit which is endorsed by a European bank. Then I will send the goods. And they don't look at other ways of dealing with Africa. To me, there is a lot of opportunities when you look at uh, alternate ways of trading with the African countries. I can give you a lot of examples because I have been to almost 90% of the African countries and I have seen even a lot of Malaysian products are there, but it's coming from Europe, it's coming from Singapore, but not directly from Malaysia. So I think that the Malaysians should look at Africa because there is a lot of opportunities for you. Okay. All right, Doctor. Um, uh, despite saying we have to fight this stigma, saying that uh, Africa poor, what uh, based on what you have seen, but you have proven that you have been living there for six years. So, Doctor, share us what, uh, how, what is the collaboration of success story between these two continents, between Malaysia and Africa, that you can share with us, Doctor? Okay, when you are looking at uh, Asia, <laughs> of course, we can say that Asians mainly. This, the Chinese, huh? China and India, they are very established in, in Africa. But if you look back in the 1990s, when I was the trade commissioner, I think Malaysia was really well known in Africa. Everybody was talking about Malaysia. In fact, Malaysia was like a darling to them. And a lot of investment took place in Africa, in Ghana, Guinea, even in Guinea. When I go to Conakry, I have the opportunity to go to a Malaysian restaurant and eat our nasi luma and roti chanai. It was that during the 1990s. It is after the Africa, after the Asian uh, crisis when everyone was affected that Malaysians have most, almost all of them, especially the public listed companies have pulled out from Africa. And there we see the entry of China in a very big way. As for India, they're already there, you know, historically, a lot of Indians are already in West Africa, in, in East Africa, and also in South Africa. They are doing very well in whatever businesses they're doing. They're in all kinds of business. But now with China going in, uh, I can see a lot of African countries, they're really looking up at China and they really want Chinese investment in their country. And there have been a lot of success stories between China and Africa, India and Africa, which I have seen myself. As far as Malaysia is concerned, a lot of Malaysians have invested in property development, in mining, in, in infrastructure and so on. And there have been some who have failed, but a lot of them have succeeded in their business in Africa. So there have been a lot of interaction between Africa and Asia at the moment. Before that, the Africans were always looking at the colonial masters. See, they were always looking at France for those uh, French colonies and Portugal for the Portuguese colony and UK for the, for the British colonies. But now you can see the Africans are moving towards Asia. They want more Asians to come. They want Asian products. They want Asian investment in Africa. And this is the time that we Malaysians should, should push ourselves to go, go into Africa. Don't ignore Africa. There's a lot of things that you can do in Africa. Thank you. All right, uh, Dr. Kenyusha, speaking as the organiz organizing chairman of the inaugural Africa Expo 2022, uh, with little uh, time, how can Africa Expo helps businesses in Malaysia to expand their prospect, doctor? I think this is the first time that uh, the organizer is coming up with this uh, Africa Expo. I think generally, you know, you have all kind of expos in Malaysia, but nothing has been talk talked about. African Expo, there have been individual countries, they have also been active in Malaysia, but it's the first time that they are bringing Africa to Malaysia. This is a private sector initiative, and we should really applaud them for this initiative and uh, compliment them for, you know, a lot of people, I remember even 
10 years ago, there had been talks about getting Africans to come to Malaysia. They want to start the African Expo. Then they say, which African country will come to Malaysia? You know, they, 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 they were very um, negative about it. But today, we have 14 African countries that are already coming for this Expo. That is a very good uh, step for a first uh, international expo in Africa in Malaysia. So I'm sure this would be a kind of a opener for Malaysians and also all those ASEAN countries which are visiting Malaysia for this expo. And I was told that almost 10 ASEAN countries have pledged to participate in this expo and send uh, buyers to, uh, to this expo to meet the African uh, companies which are already here to export to look for investment partners and collaboration. So I am sure it will be a very big success. The first expo, I hope that everybody will support this expo. And I'm sure all the Malaysian companies who are here don't miss going to participate in the expo because you will be able to network with 14 countries and see what they have to offer you and how you can also mm -hmm. offer your products and services to the Africans. Don't miss this chance. Thank you. All right, we have, we're hoping a great a collaboration between two continents, uh, Malaysia and Africa. I want to say thank you very much to Professor Dr. Abdul Akabu Ibrahim, Organising Chairman, Africa Expo 2022 AAC. Well, thank you very much for joining us and sharing your interesting thoughts here. Thank you.